road trip to the York Peninsula in South Australia to catch up with some fellow FPVers seemed like the perfect opportunity to put these four inch quads through some flight tests. Here's the QAV 180 in race trim format carrying a 1000 milliamp hour 4S battery and the GoPro Session HD camera total weight 475 odd grams. We set up a figure 8 race track at the farmyard. It was quite a large track and probably better suited to a 5 inch quad but uh, this 4 inch QAV performed admirably. Even on a long straight like that it still had throttle to spare probably because we'd matched it with some uh, well suited motors the uh, 2205 2633 kV motors uh, as opposed to something like 1306s or even 1806s so it, um, yeah, it went through quite a few crashes and it uh, still got up and flew from a lot of them uh, and if it didn't the only damage typically was broken props while we were getting around the racetrack so yeah definitely a quad that could be used uh, for racing and would perform well and would meet most people's expectations. Here it is again, this time with a 1500 milliamp hour battery which really surprised me that I could fit this on the quad along with the GoPro session. I have trouble fitting this combo on a 5 inch Alien. Uh, total weight 535 grams. So with this combo I wanted to try some big air stunts which really did test the quad. It didn't quite pull up with as much authority as a 5 inch would but it still managed some stunts like that. And back to the racetrack now where this quad with its 1004 s battery and GoPro session on board pulled off some lap times pretty easily around the 17 and a half to 18 second mark compared to the sub 16 seconds that Mitsuko managed. So a little bit of a penalty, a second and a half, two second penalty there, but if somebody was looking for a quad that could carry a HD camera and perform double duty in acro and racing, then this might be a quad to choose. So to wrap up this review of the QAV 180 frame, there's a few things to be aware of. In trying to pull off some of those big air moves, we came down very hard, crashing into the ground multiple times in the back of the quad and on the top of the quad and in the process it cracked the rear frame at the standoff connection. So this quad um, has only six standoffs across it rather than eight like many quads and there's a big wide area under the battery there that isn't supported. So it wouldn't hurt to uh, think in advance and purchase a spare top plate for it if you get one uh, to have as a spare or go one better and laminate it to the original top plate to make one that's double the thickness. And for the extra eight or nine grams of weight it adds, I think it would definitely be worth it. Here's one that a friend modified, laminating two plates together and then cutting off the tabs for the VTX it's rock solid. He also went and added an extra standoff to support the area under the battery. It's just uh, one extra standoff in the middle of the frame there but it goes a long way to improving the rigidity of the frame and uh, minimizing the chance of damage in a crash. So that's something small that any new owner could do but uh, thanks for watching my review of the QAV 180.